It's my pleasure to be presenting to you all here today and I'm very grateful to the Autism Science Foundation for facilitating this forum and for also providing great funding opportunities for young researchers such as myself um, to participate in uh, new autism research. So today I'll be talking um, a little bit about the project that I'm working on under the mentorship of Dr. Joseph Buxbaum. Um, the title of my talk is the Humanized AVPR 1A Mouse as a preclinical model for determining the role of AVPR 1A in autism spectrum disorders. The most evidence for the cause of autism spectrum disorders is genetic and um, the readout of the disorder is actually a behavioral diagnosis. The link between genetics and behavior can be, needs to be elucidated in order to understand the pathogenesis of the disease and in order to create targeted um, approaches to treating and, and solving the problem. In order to bridge this gap, we need to answer certain questions. The first being, what are the important genes implicated in autism spectrum disorders? And what are the biological roles of these genes of interest? Additionally, what kind of model exists for evaluating the role of the gene in ASDs and what should we aim at producing in terms of creating transgenic animals? So in answering the first question, we all know that there have been numerous genes that have been implicated in contributing to autism spectrum disorders. But for the purpose of this talk, I'll be addressing the arginine vasopressin receptor 1A, AVPR1A, in autism spectrum disorders. So the first studies done in um, looking at AVPR1A in autism spectrum disorders were performed by Kim et al, um, where they studied four microsatellites and determined that there was an association between um, a microsatellite region, RS3, in the upstream, in the five prime upstream flanking region, um, and it was closely associated with autism. Additionally, um, subsequent studies have, uh, have replicated these findings and also show that RS1, uh, another polymorphic region, is associated with a group with less impaired language. Uh, they found that the association between autism spectrum disorders and AVPR1A are mediated by deficits in socialization skills. Uh, in addition to the role of AVPR1A in autism spectrum disorders, it's also been shown that it plays a critical role in non-clinical populations and particularly in studies of in, within the social realm. So they've looked at studies of interpersonal relationships, dance and musical memory, altruism, as well as, well as human pair bonding. So in addressing the second question, what is the biological role of this gene of interest? Um, a lot, we have to understand how AVPR1A plays a role in the larger system, in, in the larger vasopressin system, which consists of the ligand, AVP, which acts through the important receptor, AVPR1A. We know that the vasopressin system regulates the peripheral autonomic system, and more importantly to us, uh, we know that the vasopressin system acting through AVPR1A specifically regulates the central system and in particular behavior. The role for AVPR1A in behavior has been demonstrated through um, studies in which the AVPR1A gene has been functionally inactivated. And this has been done either through the treatment with antagonists or development of knockout animals. And both systems shows that there's a deficit in social behavior and altered anxiety in, in animals that are lacking the receptor. Very important to understanding of the gene is the fact that the pattern of AVPR1A expression in the brain differs between species and this is thought to be a critical determinant of behavior. A lot of the work that has been done in looking at interspecies variation has actually been performed quite extensively in voles and as some of you may know voles are animals um, depending on subspecies type you have differences in um, social behaviors as measured by pair bonding and parent, uh, parenting. Um, we know that within the five prime flanking region, um, prairie voles and meadow voles show differences in the microsatellite length, and these differences are thought to um, lead to variable AVPR1A expression patterns, as seen in the figure here, where we have increased expression in the ventral palladium of the prairie vole and not so much in the meadow vole. Uh, this difference in expression and localization. Um, is manifested in differences in pair bonding behavior 
um, as well as parental behavior. And furthermore, an ex experiments done where they inserted prairie vole sequence into the meadow vole animal resulted in change in expression as expected, increase in ventral palatum and altered partner preference. A similar phenomenon occurs uh, in parallel in, in humans, um, although the evidence for it is not, has not been explicitly shown. Uh, so we already know that there are differences in the five prime flanking region, particularly in the RS3 and RS1 um, microsatellites, and there's differences in length. Um, additionally, we know that via studies in hippocampal post-mortem um, tissue, that the number of copies of short form versus long form are determinants of the level of the mRNA, of AVPR1A. Subsequently, we know that the long form is associated with increased amygdala activation during face viewing tasks. So uh, the next step in understanding the cause of ASDs is to um, know what the model for evaluating the role of the gene is in, in autism spectrum disorders. So we know that AVPR regulates um, behaviors such as social behavior and anxiety, which are key features that are affected in patients um, with on the autism spectrum. However, given the diversity between species of the AVPR1A gene, it is important that we generate a relevant in vivo model for examining the biology of the human AVPR1A in particular in order to investigate its role in um, autism spectrum disorders. And subsequently, um, from these kind of studies, you can develop therapeutics targeted towards, um, towards dealing with autism in an AVPR1A or vasopressin system specific way. So here comes in the project that I've proposed. Um, we perform back transgenesis uh, in order to create, uh, in the first level there, a back transgenic animal with the human gene inserted into the murine system. And through subsequent breeding steps, we're going to be able to form um, the humanized, fully humanized animal on a knockout background, as well as a knockout animal and um, a wild type animal. So these three groups will be evaluated in order to understand the role of human AVPR1A. Our first hypothesis uh, for the studying these animals is that transgenic mice expressing the human AVPR1A will demonstrate a receptor expression pattern similar to that of higher primates and distinct from that um, of wild type animals. Uh, we are going to focus particularly in certain areas that have demonstrated differences in mouse and human expression and we're going to use both evaluation of mRNA and protein expression and distribution. Uh, one of the findings that we have from back transgenic animals where we have wild type showing the AVPR1A binding pattern and, and density. And as you can see in the transgenic animals, there's a vast difference in the expression pattern as well as the intensity of the, li the ligand binding. And um, we're investigating a few of these regions. Our second hypothesis um, is based on the first one, where we will investigate transgenic mice expressing the human AVPR1A, and we expect that they'll demonstrate predictable differences in behavior compared to wild type animals based on the regions that we identified before. And so we'll be using the basic screen for uh, animal protocol, as well as analysis of anxiety behaviors, social behaviors, and sensory processing. In our third aim, we speculate that the human AVPR1A in transgenic mice are subject to epigenetic regulation due to parental care style that affects gene expression and behavior. And the way that we're going to go about investigating this is uh, creating reciprocal hybrid crosses and cross-fostering as a method of determining the role of parental care, um, as well as the analysis, a direct analysis of parental and offspring behavior. And um, further evaluation of CPG island shore methyla and, and shore methylation status profiling for both parents and offsprings. So in conclusion, I would just like to acknowledge the people who have helped me uh, tremendously in the lab, especially my boss, Joseph Voxbaum. Uh, these are just pictures of everyone enjoying themselves. <laughs> and then uh, also the members at the Bronx VA who have been really important in developing these animals and will be helping me with um, uh, phenotyping them behaviorally, as well as the SIVO Autism Center for Research and Treatment. Um, 
Larry Young at Emory University for teaching me the ligand binding technique, and of course the Autism Science Foundation. Thank you very much.